Welcome back once again. Today we're going to discuss self-hosting on Unify routers via IPv6. Most of the world hosts on IPv4 and so reverse proxy is common to share a single WAN IP address. Every IPv6 global address is reachable from the internet so no reverse proxy is required. Most internet service providers provide an IPv6 prefix delegation. Most end users either have no IPv6 knowledge or don't have a router that can take advantage of IPv6. My video entitled Self-Hosting to Infinity and Beyond discusses IPv6 in greater detail. I also have a three-part blog series entitled The Joys of IPv6 in the blog section of my website. Let's configure your Ubiquity Unify router to host an IPv6 application. What do I need? You need either a USG, USG Pro, UDM, UDM Pro, or UDM Pro Special Edition to follow this tutorial. And that's mainly so that you can follow along with the same commands, but this should work on any router using similar commands. You need to know the IPv6 prefix delegation size that your ISP offers. This will be somewhere between 48 to 64 bits. You need a server that can either be a physical server, virtual machine, or LexC, LexD container in order to host our test application. Okay, we're looking at my UDM Pro right now via the Unify controller. And I want to go down, and by the way, I have the, the classic uh, or um, old settings set as opposed to the new settings because they're a little easier to find things. Um, so we're going to go down to the gear down here, and um, we're going to go ahead and look at networks. So I have quite a few networks here. Uh, I have um, several address ranges, and actually I have several VLANs. But we're going to focus on this um, VLAN for LabNet here, and we're going to get back to that in a minute. But right now we're going to go off and we're going to look at my WAN interface. So those of you that uh, only have one WAN interface, you'll not have a WAN and a WAN too. So we're going to go off and edit the WAN interface. And on the WAN interface, by default, you probably have I using DHCP v6 as um, disabled. So I want to go up and set that to using DHCP v6. And then this um, prefix delegation size that you see here, let's blow this up a little bit. This prefix delegation size in my particular case is set to 56. Um, if you can't determine what your ISP's number is, try 64 first and then after that, if that doesn't work, try 56. So once you set that, here's what you should end up seeing. If we go in here and we look at the networks, we're going to go ahead and, and we'll see now that the uh, subnet IPv6 is set to none all the way down. I realize I have some that say prefix delegation, but we're going to go off here and look at some other things. So once you have that set at the router level, the WAN level, and if you do an if config, you're going to end up with one IPv6 address. And this thing will always start with an FE80. And that FE80 is what is called a IPv6 link local address. It's a little bit like... Um, a NAT address on IPv4 that's local to your network. But you'll have one of those just in virtue of the fact that on the router IPv6 is turned on. Now, going back to our configuration, if we go in and edit the network that we want to turn IPv6 on, in this case it's going to be my network LabNet which is a VLAN 50. I'm going down here to where it says uh, configure IPv6 network and I'm going to click on that option and I'm going to say prefix delegation. 
and then I'll have my WAN checked off, which should be by default. And then I want to put a check mark and enable IPv6 router advertisement. And you can leave everything else the same. And then go ahead and click Save. So after, after the router provisions, um, you should then have uh, a prefix delegation showing up here on your network. Notice where I've highlighted prefix delegation here. Okay, so we're going to go take a look now at the terminal. So I'm going to clear this. I'm going to do an if config. And you notice that we have not only the link local address, but we now have an address here. This longer address is actually the IPv6 global address. And you can recognize it because it's longer than the following one. The one that says prefix link uh, length 128, this one here is um, what's called the Anycast address. It's how IPv6 nodes communicate on your network. So anyway, this, this really proves that this particular machine now has an IPv6 global address. So the next step is I want to create a DNS entry for this IPv6 global address. So I'm going to go ahead and select this address and I'm going to do a copy. And then I'm going to go up to my internet service provider and I'm going to go ahead and create a DNS record called test. And I'm going to make it a quad A record because that's an IPv6 record. And then I'm going to put the address for test into the address field. And I'm going to do a save. So back on my terminal, I'm going to go ahead and ping myself, but I'm going to go ahead and ping it with the um, with the DNS name that I just created, test.scottabyte.com. And you can see that it's returning the ping, so therefore the address is correctly defined. So we're going to go out and install our own application. Uh, custom application. Let's just install the Apache web server. So I'm going to do a sudo apt install Apache 2 and there we go. We're installing Apache 2. So we have our server with an application installed. The next thing we want to do is go over to routing and firewall. We want to go over to groups and I've already created a group called test. And test is simply an IPv6 address and it's the IPv6 address of the server. So now what I want to do is I want to go into rules for IPv6 I want to create a new rule and I'm going to say test rule. And then I'm going to say accept all packets. And I'm going to go down here and leave source as any. Oh, wait a minute. Come back up here and say after predefined rules. That's what I want. So you want to do after predefined rules and you want to say accept and you want to say all. And then down here in the source, I'll say, well, it can come from anywhere, but I want it to go to the test server. And then I have another port group set up that simply ports 80 and 443. And I'm going to go ahead and say, you can go to the test server at ports 80 and 443 if you are um, coming in from the outside. So I save this. 
and I have my test rule down here. So you can see I have rules for other things like IPv6 into my PHP bulletin board, IPv6 into my web server, IPv6 into my discourse server, and my Jitsi server. So this is just one for the, uh, the, the test server that we just created. So now we're going to go to 192.168.50.50 and there's the Apache 2 web page. But now we're going to type in HTTP colon slash slash open bracket and put in our IPv6 address and we still go to the Apache web page. And now we're going to go to test.scottabyte.com and that takes us to the Apache web page. So, in summary, IPv6 is easier for application hosting because no reverse proxy is required. IPv6 is easy to configure. IPv6 hosted applications require a quad A domain record at your DNS service provider. And many end users cannot yet access IPv6 hosted services because they need IPv6 configured on their router to access your IPv6 services. And IPv6 does not talk to IPv4 and vice versa, IPv4 does not talk to IPv6. Anyway, thanks for watching today, and please subscribe and like, and we'll see you down the road the next time.